So this is my vision. In uh, a few years, we're going to have robots that can actually help 300 million people breathe better. So it's actually about one in every 10 people have asthma, and we spend over you know 20 billion dollars in the U.S. alone on the economic cost of asthma. In the conventional therapy is using the puffer where you deliver inhaled drugs that will dilate parts of the airways, and you kind of treat that globally to the whole lung, right? But the situation is, is that what really captures what goes on in the reality? What if, what if there are cases when the distribution of airflow within the lung are not even? So parts of the lung that weren't ventilated or didn't have much airflow actually didn't end up getting the drugs that it needs to. So my breakthrough in research is being able to use medical imaging technologies combining with computational modeling to come up with ways to identify regions within the lung that needs to be treated. So this is actually an image from a real patient. So see the airway tree in the lung around it. The one that's colored in blue, actually from my software, I was able to identify that's where you need to deliver the drug to and will actually improve the um, that will improve the distribution of airflow. If you can find out where in the lung that needs drugs, like how do you really get the drug there? So right now, I mean, this is my speculation of what could happen in the future, is um, there's a company in Israel that um, has developed this robot um, called Virob. So what it does is actually a very small robot, one millimeter in circumference, and it can actually travel through capillaries and veins. It can actually guide the robot to deliver precise dosage of the drug to that region. What we're studying in the lab right now is we're studying how the, when you inhale, based on different breathing pattern, you can kind of guide the directions where the, the particles will go to. So that's another way as well, you know, but robots is, it's cool and it's exponential technology too. So like the cost will keep dropping. So it's becoming more and more um, viable to use. Well, yeah. tell us about this other startup. I mean, I'm sure your advisor isn't gonna watch this video. What um, problem are you trying to solve? Yeah, point the to problem point? Of, of transportation. So the cost of building roads is very expensive and particularly, um, you know, in developing countries where you can't really justify that cost. So you're creating um, a hub between which these small, really cheap flying robots can go to from point to point. You know, right now it's about the, all the part costs is about $200. It used to cost in the military millions of dollars. Of course, like, you know, we're talking about different scales and different efficiency, but you know, with the feasibility of dis the deploying that instead of utilizing the good old trucks, and you know, depending on gasoline, while now you're depending on renewable energy. Projects on Kickstarter um, that has, you know, they're pricing their drones for $2,000. And they could carry actually a camera about that size. So, yeah. So you can get a couple pounds of, yeah, of and payload. They, they make, I mean, I think that the real cost is definitely less than 500. And what do you imagine people are gonna wanna be delivering with drones or do you not know yet? Uh, medical supplies, I think, to begin with, like we want to aim for very um, expensive but lightweight goods. I want to. I do want to get back, um, like, for one last question about uh, kind of imaging and asthma. Mm -hmm. um, so, aside from robots, what do you feel is going to be the next? Um, you know, what's going to be the next step, the next breakthrough for treating asthmatics? Yeah, I think there's a lot of um, room for improvement, especially, you know, with current technology that we have, but definitely being more um, um, personalized in terms of like how we treat uh, different patients. So right now it's always like very standardized treatment that you know, I mean you're by this weight and you're you know of certain sex and then you, so you get treated certain way. But I think the future is really to focus on how do we come up with models to actually represent how your body will actually respond to different drugs. Please thank Mint for her great presentation.